of glory comes a nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he goes among his people curing their illness. The king of glory comes a nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Sing then of David, son, our Savior and brother. In all of Galilee was never another. The King of glory comes, a nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Messiah United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here today. We're glad to see those who are in the sanctuary. We're glad to welcome those who are watching on our live stream or even uh, the recorded services later in the week. We're glad that you're here to worship. We have completed several of our Christmas offerings and uh, special gifts this year. We give thanks to Sandy and Cam for collecting for Laurel House and to Nancy and Suzanne Sullivan and others that participated in the Christmas shop in Norristown with our area cluster of churches. We continue to collect for um, Maddie Plummer's drive with the Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy with Norristown High School. Uh, there is a wrapped box in the narthex collecting hats, gloves, scarves, mittens, accessories to keep people warm in winter time. We also have, uh, as you came in, envelopes for our Christmas challenge this year which will benefit flood relief in eastern Pennsylvania through the larger effort of the United Methodist Church, and for the catch-up challenge that will help with church bills. Let us continue our worship now. Let us rise and sing as Kristen leads us and the praise team leads us in the songs beginning our worship. Good morning. Good morning. Our first song uh, today is Hope Has a Name. Um, again, this is an unfamiliar one, but we invite you to learn it and join us and reflect on the words.
Lord, there is a spirit of love and peace in this place. Be welcomed among us. Send your spirit so that we and our spirits might recognize you. So that we might open our hearts to your love, your peace, your joy and hope. So we might open to one another and see God in each other so that we might take you with us as we go into the world. Let this, our worship, transform us so that we might worship you every day, every hour of our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O oh Lord, how long have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Make us glad for the days, for the days when you afflicted us, for the Fill years us. when we saw evil. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, we will sing for joy. Let the work be seen by your servants by their children, and may the gracious care of the Lord be ours, be ours. Prosper the work of your hands for us, prosper the work of your hands. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy.
Good morning. Today's first reading is from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will ch change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Today we light the candle of joy. Will the children come forward for the children's time? <laughs> you got your place? All right. I have this box, which if you've been here the last couple of Sundays, probably is starting to look familiar, right? So this is the third week of Advent. Come on up, guys. Hello, Lily. Um, and so it's the third day of Advent. We have three candles lit. And this is the candle of joy. All right, who would like to reach into the box here? Let's see. All right, come on up, Vincent. All right, reach in and see what you've got. Oh, it's a picture. Do you know who that's a picture of? Uh, no, not quite. It's not that old. It does come from my house, though. All right. um, I'm going to give you a clue. John, will you stand up in the back? All right. Which of these two boys do you think is Jonah? Nope. <laughs> He's the little one. All right. Do you remember Noel? Noel went to college, and he hasn't been here in a long time. I can hardly drag him out of bed when he visits. Right? So Noel is older and Jonah is younger. This picture is probably about, if Noel is 20, it's probably about 15 years old. Right? So this picture is from our family when the boys are really young. Who would like to reach in and get the scripture here? All right. Uh, uh, Emily, would you like to do it? All right. And can you read that? All right, I constantly remember you in my prayers. And I thank God every time I remember you because you shared with me from the beginning. I give God thanks when I have these memories of Noel and Jonah. Do you know, your family probably has pictures when you were little. Theo, in your house, is there a picture of you when you were a little baby, even before Lily was born, right? And maybe even a picture of you holding Lily, when she was born, right? And we look back at those days and we remember them and for the joy of a new baby. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Be born as a baby. 
in our world again. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Whoop, whoop. It's an obstacle course up here. Please rise for the reading of our gospel. Our gospel is from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town, a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. When we think about joy at Christmas time, memories often go back to when we were children. I'll tell the story of my family, and you could probably fill in the details remembering what it was like for you. But in my family, we were not allowed to go downstairs and see the Christmas tree and the presents on Christmas morning until 7 o'clock a.m. That means if you woke up at an early hour, as I often did, you had to wait. So my earliest memories of Christmas are sitting in bed, staring at the uh, red lights of my alarm clock, waiting for them to change to 7 a.m. As my sister got older, my sister would wake up and she would come into my room and we would wait together. And then at 7 o'clock, we would go downstairs and, and the way our house was set up, we had to sort of shade our eyes and, and go around and go to my parents' bedroom and knock on my parents' door. And of course, my parents would be ready. They wouldn't really be in bed. But they would pretend to be in bed. And they would stretch. Oh, we're not ready to get up. And then my father had to go uh, uh, put the, start the fire and make the coffee. And he would do all these things. I don't know what he did because it took so, so very long. <laughs> and my mother would, you know, sort of talk with us and, and uh, you know, be in the bedroom and and eventually, my father would come back and say, okay, it's time. And we would finally rush out and see the Christmas tree and the lights and the presents and that Santa had been there. And we were just filled with joy. As we get older, the, 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 the excitement, the adrenaline rush, the pure childlike joy of Christmas changes, doesn't it? As adults, things feel different. When we become parents, we often see the joy through our children's eyes. It's not so much what we're looking for as to what we're looking forward to sharing with them and seeing their joy. Right. See, I, said, I can do this without notes, right? When Noel and Jonah were born, I knew a different kind of joy. They were born at the birth center out of Bryn Mawr Hospital, and I was there at the birth. I'm grateful for that. that they've gone to the days when men were sort of kept behind closed doors in an operating room and separated, but I was at the birth with Amy, and when the boys were born, each one of them, I just remember holding them as, as uh, the nurse and the midwife took care of Amy and holding the babies and, and being with them, newborn, and just whispering. I don't know where this came from. I said, tell me more about God. You, know, you just came from there. <laughs> Doesn't quite work, but it, there's a sense in which I had just this was a holy, sacred moment. As a parent, your heart, I think, grows a couple sizes bigger, um, and you 
understand joy in a new way. So there's childlike joy, there's parent joy, and as adults, we search for joy in our lives. In the Bible passage, Mary comes and visits Elizabeth. There's a picture of Mary and Elizabeth in the slides here. And Mary is a young woman and a kinswoman to Elizabeth, who is her older uh, kinswoman. So I don't know if she's an aunt or a cousin, but, but they're, they're separated in age. Elizabeth is said to be quite old. So Mary goes and travels to be with her. But Mary, of course, is pregnant. This uh, drawing is very figurative. It's theological. It's not uh, anatomically correct. Um, but this icon from the Orthodox Church shows Mary embracing Elizabeth and the children in their womb, Jesus and John. Mary was a young woman, and she was uh, less pregnant, and Elizabeth is quite advanced in her pregnancy. And so I, I like to think, reading in the lines of the story that Mary went to help take care of Elizabeth, Zechariah, being an older man, might not have known exactly what Elizabeth needed. And so Mary was there to help take care of her kinswoman. And she was there, and Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist. And then Mary went home to Nazareth and eventually traveled to Bethlehem with Joseph. But in those days when Mary greeted Elizabeth, it said the child in her womb leaped with joy. Can you imagine the child recognizing the child, the the mother recognizing the mother, the joy of family and new birth and hope and possibility. We know the relationship between John and Jesus, that they were uh, born, they were, they were kins people, they were related, and that John came proclaiming the news, the good news that Jesus was on his way. There's another a concept in the Orthodox Church. The next slide here is the Theotokos, Theotokos, bearer of God. Again, a theological, not an anatomical drawing, but the son of God, God within Mary. Mary bears Jesus, bringing forth God into the world. This is why Mary is so very special in our faith. There's a monastery in Georgia uh, near where Amy's family lives. I've gone there. There's a stained glass window with a similar uh, picture of Mary and the child. Mary bears Jesus, bears God into the world. Elizabeth, when she's bearing John, leaps with joy at the seeing of Jesus. This is joy upon joy upon joy. Do you know that we each are made in the image of God? If we read Genesis, it says that God says, let us make humankind in our image. That hour, that plural, might be the spirit, might be the angels, might be Christ present incarnate, uh, Christ present preexistent with God at creation. Let us make humankind in our image. So each of us is made in the image of God. So we might not bear God within us in the same way as the picture of Theotokos, but we have part of God. Uh, incomplete, but part of God within us. God makes us, and part of us is like God. And I like to think that that joy, that human capacity for joy, comes from God. Do animals experience joy? I think so, sort of. I think of my cat stretching out in, in a, uh, the sun that comes through a window, uh, stretching out and just feeling the sun. I think of the way uh, she comes and, and sits on my lap. Animals experience some kind of joy, but do they experience the depth of joy and connection between uh, parent and child? Understand the joy of the creator worshiping, the, the created creature worshiping the creator? I don't think so. I think there's a part of human beings that experiences joy in a, in a deeper, different way, and I like to think that's part of the image God within us, that God created us with a capacity for joy, which means that God has joy also, that if that comes from God, that God experienced joy. When did God experience joy? I imagine that God was joyful as creator. The Genesis story, I'm going back to the beginning here again, the Genesis story said that God created the earth 
and saw that it was good. God created in joy. And God created human beings, male and female, God created them, and saw that they were good. Before human beings fell away and disobeyed God, everything was good. And God had joy in us. I think God still has joy in us. I think so. That God still is joyful seeing us, seeing a birth of a new child, seeing us worship. Our worship brings joy to God. And we. I want to. the time in our service to um, show our gratitude for God with our tithes and offerings. There is an offering plate at the back of the sanctuary. You may also go to the church website and click on the green donate button. Dear God, thank you for giving us the gift of joy. Lord, help us to slow down and take in the small moments of joy that we might miss in the hustle and bustle of the season. During this time of anticipation, we look forward to the arrival of your son, Jesus, and we are so grateful for this tremendous gift. Please accept our gifts that we humbly bring forth and use them in our com community and your greater kingdom. Please use them as you see fit, and we hope that this will help our brothers and sisters to see you more clearly. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do not, I repeat, do not <coughs> change that dial. First, a quick introduction. Chris Killam is an author and an educator. He's written 14 books. He's conducted research in over 30 countries. Again, he's been on with Oprah and Friends and Dr. Oz. Chris, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Pat. It's always a pleasure to have a great conversation. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophet, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt.
We thank you for each one in this room as we gather together and bind our hearts in prayer. We lift up Vicki and Quinn that they might be well. And God, we pray for all who are sick with COVID and other diseases that they might be well, that you might heal and restore and give strength where it is needed. God, anywhere there are people suffering, we pray that you would be with them. Go where we are not able to go, Lord, in all places for all people. We know you are able. And God, where there is suffering and illness, where there is death and grief, we pray that you might give healing, that you might give a balm of comfort, God, even where we are grieving, even where we are mourning the loss of loved ones, mix into our grief and our sorrow your hope and your comfort. God, we pray for Helen with the loss of her brother Bob, for the situation in his house and with his friends, uh, with the things that she has shared with us. We pray that you would work in these situations and in all situations for healing and for restoration for the good. God, we pray that you would be in this congregation, in the gifts that we share in this season, in the word that is spoken, in the hymns that are sung, in our witness to the community around us that you are born again and that you are alive in our world. This is not just some long-ago story, but that it is good news to all people in this time and in this place. Be with us as we live this story in the next few weeks, and as we proclaim to the world that Christ is born, that God is alive, that God is doing new things in and among and around us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, singing together with the prayer he taught us to pray. element. I think you'll catch on pretty quickly. So stand, <laughs> please stand and join us. Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and unto the land 
glory and honor and praise and thanksgiving be to our God forever and ever. Go from this place, lifting your voice, lifting your heart, praising God who created us in love, Christ who redeemed us with grace and the spirit that binds us together in love and power. Go to proclaim the goodness and the glory of God. Amen.